say we can sing that today. After a day like today, we'll praise the Lord and shame on the devil. Amen. Amen. 341 in your hymnal. 341. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory. Let's all stand together as we sing victory in Jesus. On that first together, I heard an old, old story. started tonight and a uh, wonderful morning this morning and uh, what a beautiful day and uh, couldn't have been more perfect and uh, everything went smoothly good to see you back in church tonight we'll talk more about it and have some testimonies in just a little bit but uh, thanks for being back in church on Sunday evening even though you're tired and uh, appreciate you coming back and being here tonight let's open with prayer shall we father we bow before you now this evening we thank you for another wonderful Lord's Day morning that you gave to us. Thank you, Lord, for the many, many visitors that came our way. Lord, we're thankful for those who trusted Christ as their Savior. Yes, amen. Those who followed you in baptism this morning, we're thankful, Lord, for meeting with us and the opportunity to minister to our community where you've placed us. And Lord, we, we pray that decisions were made today and uh, impact were made upon lives, Lord, that will uh, last for eternity. And Lord, make a difference in someone's life. Now, Father, thank you for each one that's back here this evening, and Lord, we bow before you at the beginning of the service, and we ask you to meet with us tonight. We're, we're still a needy people, and we need our God this evening to help us and strengthen us and speak to our hearts tonight. So, Lord, make this service what you would like it to be and what you know we need it to be, and we'll thank you for what you'll do, for I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, you may be seated.
855 355 wonderful grace of Jesus greater than all my sin 355 we're going to sing all three stanzas of wonderful grace of Jesus on that first together wonderful grace of Jesus this shedding my spirit free for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus deeper than the mighty rolling sea see um we had a total of uh 240 that were here this morning and uh that's good that's somewhere uh 100 to 120 visitors i think that uh came through uh we have 50 visitor cards that are on my desk and um folks who filled out a card and 17 of those have marked on the back that they want to know either more about the church or becoming a christian or come back next week and uh Maybe they think we'll feed them next week, too. I don't know. But uh, that's a good, good, uh, good collection of visits to make and uh, follow-up visits. So it was good. And I, I felt just a wonderful group of folks, uh, very appreciative and uh, very thankful. Several of them expressed their gratitude. And uh, just several of them commented even on their cards. And that's early on in the service, uh, how warmly they were received and welcomed. And they, they really felt at home. And uh, so that was, uh, that was wonderful. And uh, everyone just did an outstanding job. Uh, as far as I know, everything went smoothly. Uh, if it didn't, don't tell me about it. No, do tell me about it. But uh, uh, just a great job. Great job by everyone involved. And uh, it's always amazing how quickly uh, people get through and you eat. I, I think we give the 
turkeys away and uh, everybody started leaving and it was only like 1.30 or something. It was amazing how uh, fast that goes and everybody gets it done. And uh, thanks for your hard work. It was great. We want to take a minute or two and uh, have some testimonies. If you'd like to just uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so and you'd like to say something good, Brother Wallace is coming, Brother Taylor is coming. They're going to have the microphones and it's uh, twofold. It's for other people to hear you, but also those listening or watching by way of live stream. They won't be able to see you necessarily, but they'll be able to hear the testimonies uh, that are given. And uh, we want to take time for you just thank the Lord for a good day and uh, if, if you had anything particular uh, that you someone you spoke to or anything uh, that stuck out to you today that you'd like to talk about or uh, share with everybody we want you to be able to do that okay who wants to start us off tonight testimony Brett and then Terry Terry's up okay we'll go with uh, go with Terry since she's right there beside you and then we'll go back to Brett all right I just want to say how much I love the Lord and how grateful I am to be can you hear me now? There you go. I just want to say how much I am in love with Jesus and uh, how grateful I am to have a God-fearing people around me and good guidance and good counsel around me. And I was able to reach out to a woman today in the bathroom. Um, God told me to speak to her earlier in the service. And I thought, no, I'm not the one. You know, he'll send someone else. And he said, go again. And I said, no, I'm not ready. You know, And I still sat there. And I went to the bathroom. And there she was crying in the restroom. And so God made an opportunity, and he'll make opportunities even if we're not ready. He'll give it. And it just made me feel like Moses when he wasn't ready, he wasn't ready. And I, was, I just told her exactly. I told her my story and how she shouldn't wait, and God will take care of that problem. And we exchanged phone numbers, and I just want everybody to be praying for Barbara. All right. Very good. Good. Brother Brett? Yes, sir. I just want to praise the Lord uh, for... Just the uh, the fellows that went out with me on various Saturdays, Bell Toro Boys especially, we took a thousand flyers in one day in three hours. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. But the real blessing about today that sticks on my mind was just the people you meet and how you meet them. The fellow that came in here had the real big bushy beard on him. I gave him a flyer. He set up front. I gave him a flyer. Just He was sitting at a bus stop, hand him a flyer, invite him out, and that was it. And then he shows up on the bus. He goes, I remember you and your wife. Y'all were just so... So nice. Well, it was good to see him on the bus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's great. That's great. Uh, between the white bus and the big bus, they had 44 ride the bus today. So uh, that's a good day. Good day for the bus. Amen. I just want to praise God for the fellowship I had with Andy. We took over 400 Turkey Dinner Day flyers, and we went. Oh, like all through the streets and putting put on the flyer, put on the flowers on cars, and me and Andy, um, we just we just took like big stacks, you know, put them in like the restaurants, and I went up to people and just tell them about Jesus, and you know, telling them that Jesus died for you, and and I just let them. I I talked to this one guy, and um. I just, you know, was being a testimony, and, and I, you know, was giving him like Bible verses that I that I know from my heart, and and um, I just, you know, I didn't lead him to the Lord, but I would just, you know, went down the line and was just giving him, you know, the scriptures on the back of the, the dinner day flyers, and um, and some days I would go out by myself, and I would pray before I would, you know, go and hand out, you know, the flyers, and I remember this one lady, I knocked on her door. And she said that you're in the, like, because she was struggling with some, you know, f like with like an addiction. And she said, you're, you're, you are an angel. And tears started, you know, coming down her eyes and she started to cry. And she said, I, I was about to relapse, but she said she, she didn't fall into like the temptation. And it's just, I just ran into some people and, and, you know, just tell them about Jesus and just the, Amen. just like the people that, I came in contact with and just being a witness and and the bonus. It's not me. It's all about Jesus and li lifting up his name and giving, you know, glory to him. Amen. That's good, Scotty. Good. With Brother Larry right down front here. Larry. You, you got to hear it, though, Larry. People will see you standing up, but they won't hear you on the live stream. So you got to let the world hear you, brother. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to thank God for... Uh, Amen. You know, the love he's given me and what he showed me uh, on my return. Uh, uh, 
five months right now nothing but uh his word is my love right now and uh amen today you know handing out some tracks you know the divine nature that peter talks about having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust but i can imagine how the hearts were felt here that the people that did come in the people that got the witness to them and the ones that actually came in um, I, that's what the Lord wants us to feel, that all will come in and hear his word and be saved. Amen. And, um, you know, I felt the warmth and the, the true guide of gratitude, you know, for people had to have somewhere warm and come in and to be loved, you know, be welcome and be tr treated like a real person. Thank you. Amen. God Amen. bless you, Larry. Yeah. That's great. Good. Good. Anybody else? Dave Paxton? You know, I love to come and serve. And I saw all those people coming in. Mm -hmm. They were coming in, and we were greeting them, and they were really happy. They were joyful. They loved the place. They, just the pe they said the people were just nice, and every, everything was just done so in, decently in order, and you could see it. It was just, everything flowed really good. And it was, I'd never heard a crossword from anyone, and I never heard anyone, nothing. The Lord just was there, and it Amen. was just a really, you could stand back and watch and see all the things happening, and, you know, I uh, talked to a few people and, and was able to, you know, tell them about the Lord and hand them a track, and they didn't get, I don't know whether they got saved or not, but I just felt that's what the Lord wanted me to do, and they were ready to move on, and they went in and ate and had a nice time, and that was uh, from all heard, and then the, the biggest thing that really got me was some of the people got up and started busting their own tables and dumping the trash and throwing stuff mm -hmm. out, and, and they just, oh, no, we're serving you. And they, no, they said, well, we need to help, you know. And mm -hmm. that was really a, a blessing. Amen. You know, God, you know, it's just the spirit that was here, I think, really led Amen. them to want to help. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Amen. That's good, Dave. Diane and James right over here on this side. My, I don't have a whole lot to say, but I noticed today that all the visitors and the people that came today were really paying attention. And even though maybe they weren't saved and maybe they were and we don't know, the seed was planted today for many. It was a quiet service for the most part and everybody was given their attention and listening mm -hmm. to the word of God. So, you know, it, seed planted and others saved and I just thought that was really awesome. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I just wanted to say something uh, that usually is overlooked. Uh, we walked right in the morning, and uh, nursery was up, running, ready to watch our kids, which is not always the case, especially when we walked in that early. But mm -hmm. Ann and everyone was there ready. Just dropped the kids off, and they were more than happy, yeah. willing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sandra. Well, you think you learned it all when you get to a certain age, and that's not true. I was sitting across from a gentleman, and uh, we started talking, and he said he was from Grove City, and uh, he says, well, I can't win one of those turkeys, he said, because my, my uh, freezer's full of ice cream. <laughs> so I think, well, we so could I, help I him with that. The uh -huh. guy lived alone, okay? Uh -huh. So anyway, I said to him, I said, why don't you come on Wednesday night? We have a wonderful service. I said, we learn a lot about the Bible. He says, well, I listen to Pastor on the radio all the time. Hmm. And I didn't know you were on the radio until uh -oh. this happened. <laughs> so he taught me. So then before he left, he gave me a card with the times that you're on. <laughs> wow. So you think you know it all, but you don't. Praise God. Let's hope his name's Daryl, that he comes Wednesday. That's great. Amen. That's great. Amen. Next. Visitors teaching our members about what, what our ministries are. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's good. I just think it's been just an awesome couple of weeks. I mean, I wish we could do this every every day, every day. Um, <laughs> I know it's Tarson, but you know what? It, it's worth it when you see that little boy, six years old, give his life to the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. he's going to be right. saved. He's not going to hell. And, and those couple, the other couple came forward, and the, the word that went to the hearts that touched somebody's heart, maybe they're backslidden, but God stirred their spirit. They were here by divine appointment. I believe that God puts people in places uh, where he wants them to be. You know, and maybe that little boy can go get 
hundreds more. We don't know. Only God knows what we're going to see when we get to heaven. Maybe we'll see it or not. But I just praise God for having such a wonderful family to be able to come up alongside. Saturday was just awesome to see people just running around and things getting done. And it was just uh, like a family reunion with work going on. And we was getting it done. And it was fun. And it was awesome. And and today to see those people come down the aisles, and uh, it was worth it. It was worth every bit of the, the whatever you had to do, the, the burden, getting up and trying to run out and get your flyers out, whatever. It was wonderful, and I just praise God and give him glory for everything that he's allowing us to be a part of. I think Amen. it's just wonderful. It's just an awesome journey that we've been on together, and I'm thankful that I get to be on it with you guys. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's great. Felicia, Felicia and, and Brother Andy back there, Don. All right, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, as Terry mentioned, this lady Barbara who came in, and it was just really humbling for me to see how the body of Christ was ministering to this lady. Um, they just weren't ignoring her, and uh, I was thinking she had a bad day. I watched literally a lady take uh, the her Bible and lead her through the plan of salvation, and it was just, um, it just brings you to tears. You can be a witness in church. You can be a witness outside of church. And it is a, it's a time to glorify God and to show people Christ. And it was just a teachable moment for me um, to be ready. And, um, and it was, you know, God is, he is near. And we, we get the opportunity to encourage people who are near to us. So always seek, always seek out opportunities. They're right under our nose. And it was just a blessing to see the body of Christ work as a team. Amen. That's good. Andy? Yeah, um, well, the last two weeks I was reminded of uh, just you work like it all depends on you, but you pray like it all depends on God, mm-hmm. and knowing that. And um, just the, the seeing the, the 20,000 flyers going out, the reservation cards, the work day, getting set up, and the signs out, and um, just the hard work that went into it. And, you know, we... We did what, what God wanted us to do. We obeyed God. That's right. We, we, the people came in. We gave them the gospel. And the thing we can't control is the decisions that are made here or out of here. And that's what God controls. And so, you know what? God is going to reap the benefits here. And like Diane said, seeds were sown. Mm-hmm. And now we just covered in prayer those that heard the gospel today that maybe weren't saved or were saved that need to be brought back into a relationship with Christ. Maybe mm-hmm. they, got, they went away. But um, I just know that hard, a lot of work went into today. And the people of God, the family of God here, came together for one, and they were united to, to a, for a great cause of getting people into the kingdom of heaven. And we obeyed God, and that's what we're supposed to do. And we did it. Amen. And now we just pray that God will do what God will reap the benefits. All right. Amen. That's good. Amen. It's true. I just want to praise the Lord that I had the opportunity to lead a lady to the Lord over the telephone. She wanted to come in, but I don't know what happened. I didn't get to meet her. But just like everybody else has said, there's so many opportunities for us to witness and to at least plant the seeds. I heard that a lot tonight. And that's exactly what I was thinking. All those flyers that went out, somebody read the back of them eventually, or will, read the back of them, and it's a plan of salvation. And what a blessing it is to be part of that. There is a lot of hard work that went into it, and I did marvel about all the younger people that were in the back fellowship (laughs) working and cleaning. So some of the older gals are getting tired. (laughs) (laughs) That's me. That's good. (laughs) All right. Over here, Lindy. I just want to praise Job. Um, God, because I got the opportunity, because I just started seasonal job this week, so I brought flyers with me, and that was a way for me to get the word out, and found out that a lady that I work with actually listens to you on the radio. Oh, she wanted wow. to know, is he as nice as he is on the radio? I said, no, wait, no, no I'm just teasing. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so that's I just great. praise God that I'm still able to use the talent he gave me, and I know y'all are like, why are you taking my picture? I never see them. You'll see them at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so right. I just thank God for the opportunity to do that and that, you know, we have a pastor that wants to reach mm-hmm. these, we, you know, people out there that are lost. And it's great that twice a year that I get David and he goes out and he passes out the flyers and he tells people, come to my church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I just explained a little bit more to them, but I just praise God for the opportunity 
that we are a church that wants to go out and see others saved and have them, you know, be in heaven one day. And I just thank you for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lindy. Brother Pete. Yeah, I want to praise the Lord for uh, uh, his free and precious gift of salvation. And uh, I, uh, I'm so overwhelmed at uh, all of the gospel that went out and got into people's hands over a free dinner. And uh, I just, uh, I, I want to thank whoever too put me on that list for the servers. My servant's heart was so filled today just to hand out some turkey. <laughs> and I loved it so much, and, uh, you know, just to help people. And, uh, and it, was, it was such a wonderful thing to me. I, I, just, I just had to go do some dishes afterwards. <laughs> oh, man. I loved it. I had a great time. My uh, servant's <laughs> heart was so filled tonight. There praise today, the Lord. So, uh, praise the Lord. And thank you very much. All to the glory of his name. That's great. Praise the Lord, Pete. That's good. Down here in the front, the Xavier. Uh, we went out on the bus today, and uh, um, we got to a few places where we usually stop. And, and right before we got to one more place, sometimes I'm still not sure of the route. I'm like, didn't know we were going to stop. And uh, I see these three young men walking, about 15 years old or so. Young men, they're not boys or adolescents. But I, uh, I saw them walking, and I was like, oh, great. And we stopped the bus, and I got off and tried to give them tracks and stuff. And, and uh, I said, well, we run a bus, obviously, and uh, so we can pick you up. And they said, okay, well. Um, is there a phone number on there? I said, uh, yeah. Oh, no, there's not. I said, oh, uh, well, here's mine. So I gave him, I said, call me, and we'll make sure we pick you up. So I was really excited for that, and uh, uh, hopefully they will call me, so pray for them, the young guys. I forgot their names now. But, um, but uh, also, uh, I, really, I really enjoy this kind of thing, seeing a bunch of people come. But uh, what, was, what I'm really excited for is who's going to come back next week. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that will be a good opportunity for us to try to, you know, come alongside and disciple somebody. And uh, so let's read our Bibles and pray and be ready. Amen. 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 That's good. Anybody else? John? Okay. Leanne? I just want to praise the Lord for the children we had today here with our families as well as newer families. And it was just great being with them, with Emma, and um, also Sierra helped us out in the um, morning session of the four and five year olds. And, for, and then I was down in nursery tonight. And um, the thing that is just so great about it is seeing our own children blend with these new children and how they um, learn to take what they already know and share it with these new children, some of them who actually said, Jesus, who's Jesus? And, mm -hmm. you know, so our children get to say, oh, you don't know Jesus? You've got to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is God's son and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you sit and you hear that and you know that they're learning well here, mm -hmm. that our own are learning well, and that even our new children as they come in are learning and wanting to come back. So, you Good. know, it was just such a marvelous feeling being with them all day and hearing these different Amen. things because both sessions, they got the salvation story, they got um, learning lessons as far as sharing and um, mm -hmm. learning names. We played games and I did it tonight with mm -hmm. the nursery too because there were others down there that weren't part of the nursery normally. And we played these ball games where we passed it around and they had to say their names to one another or then they had to say the person's name that they were given the ball to. Mm -hmm. And names are so important within the church. And knowing each other, knowing others, introducing others, mm -hmm. and just so that people feel welcomed and Amen. warm. That's so good. praise All the right. Lord. Amen. Thank you. What, what's your name again? No. Okay. <laughs> Mandy? I just want to say that it's really, truly, actually amazing how when uh, you don't expect it, people will approach you even. Um, I work with a girl at my work. She just moved in right across the street from me, actually, over there. Anyways, she approached me yesterday and um, says to me, my kids have been begging me to go to church. And her kids are five. They're in kindergarten. They're twins. Anyways. 
I'd throw in this one part because my phone, you know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they actually came. She texted me again last night and yeah. was um, wanting them to come. So the kids actually came, and they were in MS class this morning. And it's, it's just amazing how these kids, through us teaching them, actually soak in the word of God because um, I texted their mom afterwards and thanked her for letting them come and ride the bus. And she texted me back and said, well, thank you for having them. So the whole church, thank you for having her, her, her too. Um, and she also said that they were so excited that they learned about Jesus and how to be good for Jesus and all that. So uh, to hear that from a five-year-old, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just amazing that Amen. these kids that are coming in, ev- even their parents might not know, but the kids are going to know, and then the kids are going to tell the parents, and then uh, that it follows through mm-hmm. like that. So it's just amazing. So it's great. Praise the Lord. Good. Amen. Good. Brother Don? Yeah. I just wanted to say a little bit of something that most folks don't know. Uh, today, when everything was just about wrapped up out there, I came back in to get my my hat and, and uh, my Bible, and I walked in here, and the pastor was the only one in here, and he was trying to put this all together by himself, and uh, I'm not saying that to make anyone feel bad, mm-hmm. but I'm, I am saying it to let you know that, hey, we got a pastor that not only is a, a great preacher, but he'll roll up his sleeves. When there's work to be done, he'll do it. He's what James says, you know, show me your faith by your works. We got a good pastor. (laughs) And, you know, what this whole day is about is glorifying God. Getting folks in here, get them to hear the word of God. They may never hear it again, but we've had a part in it. And I am thrilled. I'm excited to have a part in this. And... uh, I just got to say, praise God, all of you, just great today. Yes, sir. Uh, it was awesome. i never seen a year like this year that so many people, visitors, kicked in and helped clean up, too. That was amazing. But I, j- I just felt led to let you all know that uh, while things was done out there, something was going on in here, too. And he was willing to do it by himself. But uh, I just want to let you know that. I felt led to let, say something. Uh, all the glory goes to God. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Don. Excellent. Anybody else? Got anything tonight? Hey, Got time for one more? Tanya? Turkey Dinner Day is one of my children's favorite days, and they love Turkey Dinner Day. They love Fair Day. And I was, we were talking all together, and I was telling him what a blessing it was that our church does it. And I was explaining not every church has turkey dinner days or fair days. And we were talking about just different blessings, and, and we were thanking the Lord for them. And Emma Jean thanked God for Leanne, that Miss Leanne came during a turkey dinner day, and she was saying, she was praising God for it. And it was such a blessing. And um, it Today was a wonderful day, and I got a chance to speak to a lady who's um, Mormon, and she came, and she's um, just searching, searching for truth, so you can pray for the Mormon who came. Amen. Amen. That's good. Brother Danny? I'll make it short. All right, we're going to put you on a timer now. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> I just uh, want to thank God for um, our church. Amen. Uh, everybody here is uh, just amazing and all the hard work. And you guys are servants of the Lord. And uh, I just want to, I'm grateful that God put me. Uh, here and with all of the stuff crazy stuff going on in the world that we would uh, continue to reach out to the community and uh, at the time when things are going 
uh, terrible in parts of this world that, that, that we here in Grove City We stood up today and made a difference. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share a scripture with you out of Hebrews 10. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. He's coming back. <laughs> and I want to be serving him when he comes. Amen. Grateful to be a part of this church. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. That's good. Well, I'm glad I'm on the winning side. Amen. Aren't you? 272. Let's sing that together, shall we? I'm on the winning side. Brother Bob? All right, let's sing that first together. Once I drifted out in sin, no joy within, and my soul was burdened down with pride. Then my Savior came along, and he showed me I was wrong. Sing it now. Well, I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord. I'm on the winning side. From that straight and narrow way I was drifting every day out upon the waters deep but it all is over now glory light is on my brow and my soul is on the winning side well I'm on the winning side yes I'm on out in sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. Let's sing that last together. We'll have the instruments drop out on that chorus. I will never have a fear. That's good. That's good. 212 today. 212. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Let's all stand one more time as you find 212. When I saw the cleansing fountain. When I saw the cleansing fountain. Open wide for all my sin. I obey the Spirit's word. I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, praise the Lord, 
though the way seemed straight and narrow, all I claimed was swept away. My ambitions, plans, and wishes that my feet in ashes lay. I will praise And greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm so glad he took me in. He's forgiven my transgressions. He has cleansed my heart from sin. Let's sing that forth together as you find your seats. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm so glad he took me in. He's forgiven my transgressions. He has cleansed my heart from sin. I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away his stain. Glory, glory to the Father, glory, glory to the Father. Glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Spirit. Glory to the three in one. Sing it up now. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give. Away each day. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Be seated if you would. Ushers will come and we'll get our offering tonight. 
we, uh, if you were not able to give Wednesday night towards the tent and Brother Woodard, um, you can do so today. I think we got about $275 on Wednesday night. And uh, the, uh, if you didn't get a chance to give in that offering, give something tonight for the tent. And uh, what a blessing that is. And uh, you just think about all the people that were out there. If we just had the fellowship hall, uh, it would have been a different story. So uh, it's really, really a blessing to have that. And um, if any men are available, I think he's coming tomorrow morning, um, I think 9, 9.30, somewhere in there, to take the tent down and pack it in his trailer. And, and if anybody's available and you can be down here to help, I know he'd appreciate that. And uh, that'd be wonderful. But uh, let's pray and we'll ask God's blessing on our offering tonight. Father, thank you for the privilege to give. And Lord, thank you for, again, just a wonderful day. As we just sang, that we will give you the praise and you the glory for what you did here. Thank you for every visitor you sent our way. And Lord, we want to pray for them. We want to love them. We want to help them to live their lives for your glory and for your honor. And Father, we do pray you'll bless our giving tonight. Lord, bless the gift and giver alike. May it take care of the needs of the, of the special day. And we'll thank you for it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible this evening for our scripture reading and go to Psalm 105, if you would please. Psalm 105, the 105th Psalm. Again, we'll read the first 15 verses of this together and we'll read it responsibly as we normally do, being together on verse 1 and alternating till we end together on verse 15 of Psalm 105. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 1 of Psalm 105. Ready? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, 
saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture now tonight. Father, thank you so much already for the wonderful music, the wonderful testimonies that have been able to be shared this evening. And Lord, thank you for just a, a sweet spirit that's in this place. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being so good to us, and we sure have enjoyed serving you, and we sure enjoy being your children. Well, Father, we pray that you'll bless the special, that, Lord, will help us to focus again on your word and what you would say to us this evening. And I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Now, Father, we bow before you as we come to the preaching of your word tonight. And Lord, I realize this evening folks are very tired. We're weary, not of the work, but we're weary in the work. And Lord, we need your help this evening. And I pray that I can be a blessing and encouragement to the folks this evening. I pray that you will encourage us through your word tonight. And as we look at this 105th Psalm, you help us to glean some things that will help us to give thanks and to give praise unto your holy name. We love you. We thank you again for your love for us and all that you've done for us. Lord, speak to us now through your word tonight as only you can. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Um, psalm 105 is another psalm of thanksgiving. Uh, a psalm of gratitude. You know, one thing that we tend to lose in our countries is just not only expressing gratitude, but uh, just having manners in general. Um, one little girl said to Grandpa, I'm really proud of you, Grandpa. He said, what are you proud of me for? He said, she, little girl said, I notice when you sneeze, you learn to put your hand in front of your mouth. And Grandpa said, of course, how else am I going to catch my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> One lady was telling about her husband who complained one day because their daughter accidentally left her tennis shoes on the kitchen table. And he was kind of upset and he said, doesn't she realize we eat off that table? And he went on outside to do some work in the garage and 
the lady said I took her shoes off the table and cleaned the table off and I went out to do some shopping and said when I come home I was bringing the groceries in the house and I couldn't set them on the table because there was a car muffler sitting on the table. <laughs> some of you might relate to something like that. You know, it's used to be you could always tell a child or, a, or someone who was from the south because they always said please or yes ma'am and yes sir and no ma'am and no sir. Uh, I remember I had cousins that lived in Arkansas and, and they were always, they'd come up north to visit and we would always think that's uh, peculiar how they would always say yes ma'am, no ma'am, no sir, yes sir. Uh, they, don't, they, didn't teach, they don't teach that much in the north, though they should teach that. In the north, that's that's proper manners. Uh, you're welcome, thank you, may I, things like that. Uh, we don't get uh, we're losing our manners. You know, you. By the way, you, you'll never get manners outside the home until you teach them inside the home, and they have to be taught at home. Uh, a lot of the. Uh, I, I, I got to be careful here. I won't go off on this, but you know, a lot of our behavior today of of students who think their college ought to be paid for and and they ought to be given everything uh, is because they've been spoiled at home by by parents who didn't re rear them and train them and ever ever tell them no, uh, teach them to to earn what they get and not just be handed what you get and throw a tantrum and that's all. Uh, listen, that's all these walkouts and boycotts are. They're just temper tantrums of older people to try to get their own way. And uh, that's free. You don't pay any extra for that, but that's, uh, that's what you have there. But, you know, I think the, the worst form of, of crudeness or not having proper manners is when we are not showing our gratitude to God. When we live unthankful lives to the Lord. He deserves our gratitude. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 David said in Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And, and so he continues to praise the Lord. That's a great habit to develop. A great, ha great way to live where you'll say, His praise will continually be in my mouth. And, and if you think that's easy, try it sometime. It is not an easy thing to do. And so we're going to talk tonight just for a few minutes, if you just give me your attention, on give thanks and remember. Or you could say remember and give thanks. But it's the same thing. And the first thing I want you to notice is here in Psalm 105 is, he says, give thanks and remember His wonders. Verse number 4, seek the Lord in His strength, seek His face evermore, remember His marvelous works that He hath done, His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. His wonders. It's, it's time you, you, we, we, we stop and we think and we remember the wonders uh, that the Lord has done. All right, let's, let's deal with this, okay? Children, these little ones, and, and, and it's not their fault. They're just so young to be in church, and they're not used to that. I'm not sure. When we pick up on Sunday evenings, you need to know they need to be a fourth grade or above to come to Sunday night church. If they're not fourth grade or above, they can't come on Sunday night, okay? And that's just for their sake. They're, they're, they're not used to sitting and listening and being in church and uh, for them to sit for... Uh, you know, an hour, and we have another hour to preach. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't believe you don't believe that, but uh, it's it's hard on them. And so let's let's uh, we'll try to help them out. I was reading this week about Stan Musial. When I say the name Stan, the man Musial, who knows who I'm talking about? Anybody? Here, a few guys here know he was a great baseball player. He was a fellow I was named after. Uh, he was with St. Louis Cardinals, and my father was a pitcher in the Cardinals organization. My father, uh, spring training, I think it was 1952 or 53, um, was, it was kind of a, uh, I don't know if it was batting practice or inner squad game. He was pitching, and they did not have screens in those days. Now they, uh, by now they have machines to throw it. But uh, 
even if you threw batting practice, they, had a, they, they develop a screen that if somebody hits a line drive back at you, it hits the screen and you don't have to worry about anything. But a guy hit a line drive back and my dad got his glove up. He was a left-hander. He put his glove up and it tipped off the top of his glove and it went right and hit him in the eye. And uh, he ended up losing that eye. But in the hospital, many of the Cardinals came to visit him and one of the Cardinals that came to visit him was Stan Musial. And, uh, and that was good because my dad hadn't made the big league roster yet. He was still in the minor leagues, but it was spring training, so everybody's together in spring training. And he never forgot that visit from Stan the Man Musial. And when I came along a few years later, he named me Stan after Stan the Man Musial. Okay? Aren't you glad for that tidbit of useless information? But there you have it, all right? Um, uh, Stan the Man passed away on January 19th of 2013 at 92 years of age. And he played 22 seasons with the Cardinals from 1941 to 1963. And uh, he was, most people, when they talked about Stan Musial, they said he was the most selfless of sports heroes. Um, one man, Wade Boggs, who later went to play third base for the Red Sox, was touched by Musial's enthusiasm. He said everybody knew who Stan Musial was. Everybody knew what a great person he was. He was one of the best players to ever play the game, and he was happy for me when I made my first team. He was extremely kind to me. He was one of a kind. Whitey Herzog, longtime manager, said he was always great to me when I was a nobody. He will always be Mr. Baseball. You can go around the world and you'll never find a better human being than Stan Musial. And you, you think about all the people that you read and, and the praises they would give to Stan Musial. And, 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 you know, when you hear things like that, you think, uh, I'd like to have known that guy. I would like to have known a fellow like that. He seemed like he was as good as he was to people. And, and by the way, you're not going to be that good to people, I don't believe, unless you have some connection with God, because God is the one who makes us good, and, and to have that kind of a testimony. But, but listen, if we can think that way of people, certainly we should be able to think that way of God. Certainly we should be able to think of God and His wonders, God and His goodness, God and the things that He's done for us. And we should be able to recount, and not only does, do we think about Him, the Bible says here, that, that we can marvel at His wonders. To marvel at His wonderful works that He's done for us. Whether it's creation, whether it's the universe, whether it's beyond what we can even see or imagine. If it's the animals, it's the, the things that He's created and the, the marvel that they are. Uh, we would look at what He's done and consider the miracles that, he, that takes place and the creation that He has uh, spoke into existence and we marvel at the wonders of God. I marvel at the wonders of God. And by the way, we're, I, I read this. I read this about Dwayne Davis. He, he's a, a testimony that I read this week. He said, I dread to think where I would be today if God had not saved me. He said, my drug and alcohol abuse started when I was 14. I was experimenting at first with tobacco and marijuana and quickly been using harder drugs. And by the way, marijuana is a gateway drug. Don't anybody tell you anything else? And, uh, and, and, and so, many, so many who are on harder drugs will tell you that's where they started. That's where they began. And so he said, um, it wasn't long before Satan was in full control. I was heavily involved in taking and making drugs. This led to violence and robbery. I'd been out of, in and out of jail since I was 18. And I can't help but, but weep when I think of all the men and women's lives I had led to destruction. And you know, everything we do in life affects those around us. Uh, the principle we learn in Reformers Unanimous is that our sinful habits hurt those who follow us. And everybody has an influence. Everybody has an influence. Uh, and and you, you will affect those people one way or the other, either a positive for Christ or a negative for Christ uh, as we live our lives. And he, he goes on to say, when he was sitting in a prison cell, lost, hopeless, and without direction at 34 years of age, God began to work on me. And he said, upon my release... From prison, he led me to cross paths, believe it or not, he says, with a backslidden Christian. But he invited me to church. And he said, I went, and in 1997, I met my Redeemer and Savior, Jesus Christ. I, he said he received Christ 
And he said, I followed the Lord and was baptized in Christ's name. He said, I carried a lot of baggage to the altar that day. But after laying it all down and giving it all over to him who is altogether lovely, he made all my burdens roll away. He says, I can't even express the love and peace I felt that day and still do today. He said, I'm now 40 years of age and I thank God every day for His blood and His mercy and His loving kindness to me. Can you remember what He's done? Can you remember uh, how good He's been to you? You know, we were talking uh, talking today. I'll, I'll say something about this later, talking to Brother Brett. You know, it was a year ago today that they just showed up for dinner day. Uh, they came from New York. Uh, they got up early, and uh, he just, uh, didn't know they were coming, didn't know, and he, he jumped in and started helping, and uh, the house had burned down in New York, and there's some other things that have been going on, and uh, now a year later, here they are, and uh, doing, doing such a wonderful job in the, in the bus ministry and serving the Lord, and Lisa, of course, with the piano and the music program, uh, just, just amazing what the Lord has done. I think of the, the big days, a hundred and... 161 now have been saved through the 10 years of Turkey Dinner Sunday. Uh, 161 folks have been saved. And so, uh, hey, that, don't, don't, that, but, but not only that, uh, that's where he came from. <laughs> he was on a dinner day. Uh, he and Bobby, uh, because someone knocked on their door. Pete and Emma, who gave their testimony tonight and were so heavily involved in this because of a dinner day, a little... That little girl back there, she's not so little anymore. She's growing up on us, but uh, she knocked on their door and handed them a flyer. A child handed them a flyer and invited them to come and be here for dinner day. And uh, uh, Leanne's here because of a dinner day. And uh, somebody knocking on her door and giving her a flyer and uh, inviting her to come. Jenny's down here, Jenny, because of a country fair day. And uh, came to country fair and uh, Jenny got saved and baptized and became a member of the church. And uh, that's... Uh, you know, sometimes you just need to think and need to remember his wonders. That's an, uh, that's an amazing thing. You, you don't know. It's what Xavier, you know, you, you, you don't know. I've been doing this for, for many years. I was adding up different places that we've been and had dinner days. I think this is my 18th dinner day. But, uh, you know, you, you, everyone's unique. Everyone is different and, and has its own. But, you know, God has somebody that was here today that's going to become the next Jenny Ponder and the next Pete and Emma Abrams or the next Danny Bobby Wright or the next Leanne Schnapp. Well, let me think about that one. No, I'm kidding. But uh, we, you don't know who, who it is. You don't know who God has that's going to be able to, to, to come. So think upon his wonders, his many wonders. Then it says, in verses, starting in verse number 6, give thanks and remember his covenant. Notice he says, O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are on all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham in his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, into Israel for an everlasting covenant saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. So God is remembering his covenant, and, and here David is just saying he remembers the covenant with Israel, and God, by the way, they are God's people, and they are in the land he promised to them, not to anyone else. And, and you know, <laughs> they can, all those, it's amazing when you look at a map, if you ever just look at a map and look at how tiny Israel is. And, and it's, it's just boggling to someone who would just look at it and not know anything about the Bible. And look at that and think, how can that little nation stand against all these countries that are surrounding it? But she does. That, and there's only one explanation. It has to be God. It has to be God. But he's remembering his covenant that he started back with Abraham. And, you know, somebody said a man apt to promise is apt apt to promise is also apt to forget. You ever promised something and forgot you promised it? Ever promised to be somewhere and forgot you're supposed to be there? Hmm? Ever say you'll do something and forgot to do something? Hmm? Hope everybody brought their vegetables and their pies and everything in. But you make a promise and we forget. 
it's easy to happen and in our in our humanity we can forget that but God says we have to be careful that we make sure that when we make a promise to God we keep our promises to God that's important look in your Bibles you're in Psalms just keep your finger there we'll come back to Psalm 105 but turn to your right go past Proverbs and then get to the book of Ecclesiastes would you look there please Ecclesiastes and go to chapter 5 Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and notice starting in verse number 4 where the Bible says when thou vowest a vow unto God defer not to pay it for he hath no pleasure in fools pay that which thou hast vowed better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin neither say thou before the angel that it was an error Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? Here God's making it very clear that you have to be careful when you make a promise to God that, that you better be careful that you're going to keep your promise. That you're going to keep your vow and it's better not to vow than to vow and not pay. And it says, it's interesting, God ends that by saying He can destroy the works of our hands. For the things we try to do, they'll crumble. They'll, they'll come to nothing. And God can be angry about that. So don't let your mouth lead you into sin. Make sure that your brain is engaged before you let your mouth speak. Before you say something before God. Because God takes that seriously. You know, God always keeps His promises. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Hey, that's a promise from God. And if we do our part, He was faithful to do His part. Uh, by the way, uh, we could testify. We'd have people not testify. That's true. We, we, I've seen that happen in my life. You've seen it happen in your life. That promise is true. Uh, we talked about this this morning. If you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father which is in heaven. All right? I, I, I want to, and I do, confess Him before men. I hope you do too. And if I do that, I know that He's confessing me before the Father which is in heaven. And I want that, don't you? He keeps His promise. Then He said in Matthew 10, 42, if you give just a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in my name, He said, then you, then because, because they're my disciple, you'll in no wise lose your reward. And, and, and He said, as much as you've done one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me and so he keeps his promises and we know the biggest promise we trust him to keep is salvation that if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ if you call upon the name of the Lord you shall be saved and and you take that promise I'm I, I'm, I'm saved tonight I'm going to heaven tonight based strictly on what that book says I did what God said to do in order to go to heaven and, and for God to say, you know, you're not getting in, he'd have to deny his word. And God cannot deny his word. And so I know he'll keep his promise. And nothing is better than knowing that you're saved. And nothing's better than knowing that God will keep his promise. It's not about me keeping the promise, because even if I deny him, he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. Uh, it's his covenant that he's made with me. And God won't break his covenant yea he cannot break his covenant and so I give thanks for his wonders and I give thanks for his covenant but then back in Psalm 105 and verse number 11 we want to thank God for his people notice what he said saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance verse 12 when they were but few in men in number yea very few and strangers in it strangers in that land when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to, to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. You know, there's times that God didn't allow people to hurt his people. Uh, in, in Genesis 35, if you want to look there quick, you can. Genesis, first book in the Bible. Genesis 35 just this is one of those verses where you could just skip right over it if you're not paying attention okay and uh, that's why when you read the Bible you need to read it slowly 
because you'll miss things if you don't. And, and you'll go right past it and you'll miss it. it here, uh, God tells Jacob to rise and go back to Bethel. And he's going to go and, and he tells him to, uh, in verse 2 to put away the strange gods that are among you. Be clean, change your garments. And let us arise, verse 3, and go to Bethel. And I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Verse 4, they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. Now watch verse 5. And they journeyed. And the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Jacob travels. He's not a big entourage here. You know, it's just his family. That's why he says God took care of you when you were few in number. You're not the millions yet. <laughs> They're just still few in number. But God caused a fear to come upon those nations. And as they traveled, nobody would pursue them. Nobody would harm them. That's what he's referring to over in Psalm 105. And God protects his people from harm. Like when the Egyptians chased them coming out of Egypt. Remember, then they come to the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea. And, and they go through. And then when the Egyptians tried to go through, what did God do? He, he brought the water down. And by the way, he, he made it muddy and, and mucky. And so they, is that a word, mucky? And uh, they, they got their wheels stuck in the, in the, and then the water came down and he drowned them all. What was he doing? Protecting his people. Protecting the nation of Israel. He did it time and time again uh, throughout the Old Testament. He protects them. He protects the prophets. And, and he takes care of them. You recall when, um, uh, was it Elisha coming out? Uh, and and some, it says some of the children come out and they started calling him, Go up, thou bald head. They started calling him Old Baldy, you know. And uh, you know what God thought about that? Who, who remembers the story? A she-bear came out of the woods and what? Tore him up, killed him. I said, you want to make fun of my prophets? Uh, I'll teach you a lesson. Uh, you think, oh, that's just fun. Uh, you just have fun. God doesn't look at it that way. Be careful. Listen, not, not just, I think, again, not just the, the, the prophet, not just the man of God, but I think anyone doing a work for God, you ought to be careful about saying something negative and saying something uh, critical of someone who's doing something for God. God doesn't take that lightly. What does God say? Jesus looked at his disciples. He said, a new commandment give I unto you that you love one another. By this shall all men know you're my disciples because you have loved one to another. Romans 12 verse 10, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. This is, this is how we are to one another. Romans 12, 16, be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. If Galatians 5, 13, brethren, you've been called under liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Ephesians 4, 2, with lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Listen, make sure that we're showing the love for each other that we ought to have. Love for the people of God. Caring for each other. Uh, uh, preferring one another. And, and it's interesting. You ever notice that, a, and, and I guess rightfully so, when you go to a funeral and people stand up to say things about the person that's gone, it's always good things. Notice nobody ever stands up and say, yeah, the guy cheated me one time, or the guy lied to me, or the guy, we, don't, we leave all that stuff out, don't we? All we say is the good things, don't we? You ever been at a funeral and you hear these things and you knew the person, you thought, who are they talking about? <laughs> you kind of feel that way maybe sometimes, but it's all good things. But, but wait a minute, why do we have to wait till someone's dead to just think about the good things they've done? Why is it that when someone's living, we focus on something bad they've done or wrong they've done, and that's all we think about? And that's what we zero in on. And, and, and listen, and sometimes we, we think about that person, we never let them out of that box. 
Oh, they, they were a drug addict, or oh, they were this, or oh, they've been divorced, or oh, they had this. Whatever it is that you think about somebody, and then that's all you ever think about them. You never let them out of the box. God says, don't do that. Learn how to give thanks and praise to people. Got to spend some time the other day with Brother Paul down at the nursing home. Brother Lamprecht on his birthday, 89. 89. It's always fun because he just got out of the shower. He didn't have any hearing aids in or anything. Hi, Paul! The whole hall heard me talking to him, I'm sure. And I had a, you know, you got to look at him so we can kind of tell what you're saying. You, you've been there, yeah, keep, keep looking at me. What a blessing. He had a, he had a pile of, tri, of uh, turkey dinner day flyers on his uh, little moped there. Well, not moped, whatever he drives around there in, you know. Scooter, yeah. He said, man, you got flyers in here. Where'd you get those? He said, oh, Bob Wallace brought them in for me. <laughs> get him, pass them out in there, amen. Remember, so many... Sunday mornings when we still had the office back here in the back, and Paul would be the one to always come early. He'd be here by 8 o'clock in the morning for Sunday school. And he'd sit in the back there because he'd pass out bulletins like what the Coleman's do. And he'd sit out there and he'd just sing. Didn't have to play any music on the speaker. I'd just listen to, to Paul sing and uh, just enjoy those. If you remember coming on New Year's Eve, he would always take a little time and sing. He'd sing crazy songs then, you know. And... Uh, what a blessing. What a blessing. Just, just take time to, to thank God for people. And to thank God, you know, when you think about these last two weeks, you think about yesterday and the big work day and 60-some people here and today and everybody working and, and doing something and helping out and uh, setting up, uh, cleaning up, putting things away. I mean, you, you walk out of this place at what, 3 o'clock this afternoon, and you couldn't hardly tell anything. It, it was just a regular Sunday. Uh, everything was back in place and ready to go. I went, walked into Fellowship Hall, and man, tables are put away, rental stuff stacked up, junior church set up for next week, and uh, everything in order. Just incredible, incredible people. I, I, I hesitate sometimes to single certain ones out because then somebody will feel bad they didn't get singled out but you know uh, I, I, I want to say I appreciate Bob and Kay Wallace they just uh, did an outstanding job the last two weeks really hours and hours of time um, Kay did much work in the office and organizing the big day and taking phone calls and organizing who needs a ride and who doesn't need a ride and uh, getting all that together. And uh, it, was, it was humorous at times, at least when you're trying to give people directions how to get here, but uh, that, was, that was fun. But uh, <laughs> did a great job, did a wonderful job. I, I, I mean, you know, probably, probably 50 hours, 60 hours uh, working and, and laboring and uh, just, just a tremendous job. I admire your love for the Lord, both of you. It's wonderful. The, the Villa Toro family. What a blessing you've been. God, God, God led you here. I'm sure of that. And uh, what a joy to see all of you serve the Lord and jump in. I know when, when I, I said something, I asked my wife. I said, "Now I need somebody to. I need to put somebody in the kitchen." To, to help, and uh, she goes, ask the Villa Toros. I said, man, it's their first dinner day, you know, I like the first one, you like everybody to just experience it, you know, and uh, she said, oh, she worked with that, this, that breakfast a week ago, and she goes, oh, no, those be the ones, and, and I mentioned the Bob Reed, I said, I'm going to the Villa Toros, come in, and I said, I'm going to assign them in the kitchen, I said, I don't like to do that, but he goes, oh, you know what's great about that, I said, what, he said, you get the whole crew. <laughs> he says they all come in and man they all go to work and they do and uh, they were this morning 
got setting up chairs and tables and cutting pies and putting the cellophane on it, whatever it is, the plaster, the, whatever that is you cover it with, and uh, putting the pies on the table. And uh, what, what a joy uh, to have you and to serve with you. And it's great to see your desire to serve him. But there's so many others. Just how can I serve? How can I help? Uh, just wanting to jump in, wanting to do something, and wanting to, to, to be, a, be a blessing. And uh, I, just, I, give, I just spent time this afternoon just thanking God for you. And just thanking God for the people that I get to serve with at Bible Baptist Church. Just thank God for his people. You know, several cards that people wrote just... How, what a wonderful church and how welcoming and how friendly and how nice. And Several cards, they, they turned it over and wrote on the back uh, comments about the church. What a joy. You know, that's not everywhere. I don't, I don't want you to go find out, but that's not everywhere. And thank God you have somewhere like that. I want to remember his wonders, remember his covenant, but I want to remember his people. And give thanks for the wonders. And give thanks for His covenant. But give thanks for His people. Give thanks that you have people like this to serve with. And have people like this to, to go through the journey with. You know, it's not just about the destination, though we're looking forward to heaven. But it is enjoying the journey along the way. And as long as we have a journey to go on, I'm glad I get to go on the journey with the people at Bible Baptist Church. Thank you for serving the Lord, and thank you for your love for the Lord. And uh, it sure was a wonderful day today. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we ask you to add your blessing to the thoughts this evening here from Psalm 105. Lord, thank you for your wonders. Ten years of a dinner day and 161 people receiving Christ as their Savior. And we don't know, Lord, what other decisions have been made through the years that Maybe folks got saved later and they're, they're from another state or they're from another area and they're serving you now and we won't know about that till we get to heaven. But I know there's wonders that you do each and every day of our life. We thank you for that. Thank you for the wonderful salvation that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for your covenant that you promised to us. So many promises that you give that Lord we know your promises are true and they're right and help us that when we make our promise to you help us to fulfill it and then God we thank you for your people how wonderful it is to serve alongside people who love you and want to do something for the Lord with the life you've given to them we serve out of gratitude. We serve out of a love for you. We're so thankful that you allowed us to do this. And Lord, we do want to impact our world. We do want to impact our community. Perilous times are upon us. We know they're here. Lord, we, want to, we understand the darker it is, the brighter the light needs to shine. And so let our light shine. Let us influence our area for Christ. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. Give thanks unto God for His wonders. Give thanks and remember His covenant. Give thanks and remember His people. I wonder how many believers tonight would just say, Preacher, I need to give thanks and remember. I need to remember and give thanks. God has spoken to my heart this evening. Pastor, pray for me tonight. Will you put your hand up? Yes. Yes. Amen. God's good to us. Let's take a moment tonight. I'll pray. We'll have our invitation. Let's take a moment and just bow the knee as a church and thank God for his goodness to us. What a, what a joy it is to serve him. What a joy it is to serve him with others who want to serve him. Let's just thank God for his goodness to us. Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight. Thank you again, Lord, for being such a gracious and good God to us. We sure enjoy 
serving you. And we do enjoy serving you. We pray that you'll allow us to continue to be faithful till we hear the trumpet sound and you call us home. Now, Lord, I pray your blessing on this invitation. Hear our prayer and hear our prayer of thanksgiving tonight. We begged you for a good day. We, we ask you to bless it. You did so. We want to thank you. So hear our thanksgiving tonight. Hear our praise this evening. And help us to be thankful for the wonders you do, for the covenant you've given, and for the people that we get to serve the Lord with. May you be pleased with our praise during this invitation time. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she begins to play, God has spoken to your heart this evening. You respond to Him, will you? That's right. You kneel. You can use the front row if you can't. If you have our time kneeling, just spend some time thanking the Lord. That's right. to have Chuck and Cynthia Linderman coming this evening, coming for membership in our church. Isn't that great? I was thinking, how long have you been coming? A 
about a year now. What? Over a year? Okay. The wife knows. She knows. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, I told him, I said, he told everyone to come and join tonight. And I said, you may shock some people who think you're already members. You know, um, faithful, uh, soul winner, uh, out on Saturdays, knocking on doors and giving the gospel, pushing a bucket and a mop yesterday. Maybe I shouldn't tell your wife that, huh? but uh, she knows that. Uh, yeah, and uh, just a uh, uh, just a wonderful couple here. She's she's already helped out in the nursery at times when we needed somebody, and uh, just delighted to have you. We really are. Love you folks, and have come to love you as we've gotten to know you a little bit. And uh, we're we're delighted the Lord has put on your heart to be part of the church here. All those in favor of welcoming them into the fellowship of our church, let it be known by a hearty eye, aye. and opposed by like sign. Great to have you tonight, all right? We're going to have you, after I pray, head to the back there so folks can, on the way out, greet you and welcome you. And uh, that's an exciting thing, isn't it? Boy, that's, that's great. Praise the Lord. All right? Well, let's see. What's today, the 15th, all right? Oh, I didn't say anything about this next week. Did I? Regular schedule, Wednesday night, back at it with our midweek service. Um, Thursday night, uh, pray for the, the prison there, the... We didn't get to go last Thursday evening. The uh, Wednesday was Veterans Day, and so I guess the chaplain were not, was not in. Is that what the idea? Whoever, whoever was in charge of writing passes did not come in on Wednesday. Therefore, anything scheduled for Thursday, nobody got a pass. So they called and said, no use coming. No one will be allowed out of their cell to come. So um, we'll... Uh, we'll be back at it this Thursday. They had a great day at London, though. They had 19 there, I think, London on Saturday morning. Uh, four new ones, is that right? And uh, 11, uh, the 11 guys who were there, you know, going through the program, 70 challenges were done between those 11 guys. And uh, some of you are familiar with RU, you'll know what that means. But they're, they're doing well. They're, they're really eating it up. And uh, good, good men. So continue to pray for those ministries. And uh, we'll be, uh, remember the service right before Thanksgiving is on Tuesday night, the worker appreciation service. It's Tuesday evening. Sometimes people travel away for Thanksgiving and we won't want you to have to miss church for that. So we do Tuesday evening. And then if you need to travel on thir Wednesday to take, be somewhere for Thursday, that's a, that's a good thing. So remember, that's a Tuesday night, okay? All right, let's pray, shall we? Father, we bow before you now this evening. Thank you again, Lord, for a wonderful day today. Thank you, Father, for the Lindermans and for them coming to become part of our church family. Lord, uh, again, we, we already uh, love these folks and we're thankful for their desire to serve you and their servant's heart that they have. And Father, I pray that you will give us all a good week now. Lord, it's been a great start to the week today. Lord, I pray we would just take the joy that we feel tonight. We're tired, but we're joyfully tired. And Lord, I thank you for the, the many hours and the, the much labor that has gone on these last two weeks. And Father, I pray that your blessing will be upon each and every one. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'll give us safety as we go home now. And Lord, I pray that we'll continue to be about the Father's business this week. We love you. We thank you again for a wonderful day. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Remember, if any of you can be here tomorrow morning with the tent, that'll be a great help. All right? Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below it's the grandest thing to be a christian it's the best thing i know god bless you you are dismissed